We're going to go on a research boat and download Spotted Eagle Ray data. This is precious data on here. It's definitely fun to code with friends. It makes it more of a fun experience. Thank you so much everyone out there who's joining us for this live stream. <laughs> Major funding for Sci Girls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding is provided by PPG Foundation aims to bring color and brightness to communities around the world. Cargill, helping the world thrive. And Craig Newmark Philanthropies. in our garden. But I can't see any of them. Uh, is the water supposed to be this murky? Uh, I don't think so. Yuck. Uh, that's a lot of pond scum. I think it's algae. How do we fix it so we can see our fish? I don't know. But know who might have some ideas? Sci girls, we need you! <laughs> Something's fishy. Or not fishy enough. Let's see, uh, ponds, algae. Ooh, what's this? <laughs> That's a good one. One thing I really love about the ocean is that it is just a big mystery. My name is Layla. Every time you go into the ocean, you can learn something even more exciting. I found one. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a little cookie now. My name is Burn. I love being in the ocean because it's like just a place you can get away from everything else. It's kind of nice and quiet and just very peaceful. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. Look at the little display. My name is Claire. The area system that I'm interested in the most are science, which I like veterinary science, technology, and I enjoy math. It's alive, it just moved. Oh, there we go. Sarasota is located on the west side of Florida, right by the Gulf of Mexico. It has super soft sand and it's beautiful. Watch out, okay. <laughs> Here, watch out. I know Layla and Byrne because we've all taken camps at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. Dr. Eugene Clark, known as the Shark Lady, founded Moat Marine Laboratory in 1955. Find her picture in the aquarium and take a group selfie with her. <laughs> Moat Marine has a laboratory and an aquarium. So in their laboratory, they learn all about the animals and collect data, and they also have an education program. And that allows kids and adults to go and actually help with the data and learn about all the different animals. The buffet is open. Oh, okay. That feels so weird. <laughs> Meeting the rays is awesome. They feel like squishy vacuum cleaners. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Today we've we met Kim, who's a marine biologist who studies eagle rays. This is a spotted eagle ray skull. They have these teeth and layers, and they're able to take a mollusk and crush them up, and they spit out the shell parts, which you see here, and ingest the meaty part of the shell. Kim is studying where the spotted eagle rays go and what they eat. So they want to know where they go in the seasons that they're not here. How do you study how the different animals move? With the eagle rays, we use something called acoustic tags. Would you gals like to learn about our acoustic technologies? Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to learn about what technology Kim uses to be able to track all those different rays. 
we are at the Mochiki Hut and Miss Kim is describing the different technology. We have some special equipment here, acoustic tags. Why do you have different size tags? Because of the battery power that they have. We pick what size tag we can use based on the size of the animal. This is a passive acoustic receiver. And these are what we have in the bay in certain areas and in the passes. You said they're acoustic tags. Does that mean that they make noise? They do make noise, and that's how we can tell individual tags apart. And I can actually show you. If you you can hear there's a unique pinging. It's called the coded pinging tag. So the acoustic transmitter, every time it gets within range of the receiver, it makes a little ping that's specific to that transmitter. So guys, I just got some new small tags in, and I need to test the range on them. Do you guys want to help me do a range test today? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. We went out on the kayaks, and we all got different size tags. You get out a little bit, you can drop in your tags. So we could test how far away from the receiver we could be with the transmitter still working. So I'm going to have you go out to the furthest marker. So on the kayaks, we were mimicking the spiral eagle rays so we could see how far they can be so we can still detect them. Next, we're going to go on a research boat and download spotted eagle ray data from a receiver. So what time of year do you usually find uh, spotted eagle rays? The typical time we find them is kind of March through about this time of year, they tend to go somewhere else in the winter, and that's one of the reasons we're interested in tagging them. So the, the lighter color is where it's shallower, and the water in general right now has a lot of, we have red tide in the area. Red tide is an algae that emits a toxin, which affects the animals in the bay. It's normal for it to occur occasionally on lower levels, but what's happening recently, there's been very high levels and a lot more. It's not good for the humans or the fish. If you go to the beach during a high red tide bloom, then you just all around the shoreline. It's devastating. Hey, Chuck, I'm going to throw the flag in. This is all the receivers. The two that are highlighted in yellow are our new pass receivers. So these are the two that we're focusing on today. We're going to be doing our um, south receiver first, and then we're going over to do our north receiver. All right, going in. Once we got to the place where the receiver was, the divers went in and got the receiver. We timed them from when they went off the boat and then when they grabbed it. The receiver, even though it's underwater and even though it might be like pretty far away, it can still pick up on the noise with all the noise that's going around the ocean. That'd be cool. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. All right, this is precious data on here. Here we go. The protocol for downloading the data from the receiver is put the key into the receiver, which allowed via Bluetooth the computer to get the information from the receiver. And any tagged animals that showed up on that receiver, they're going to come up in our detections list. From the receiver, we got to know when it passed through and the ID number. Number 58427. 58427. Yeah. What kind of ray is it? A male or a female? It's a female. When was it tagged? 2016. 2016. April 26. I am going to clear all the data off this receiver and get it back to Captain Greg. Afterwards, we took the time for when they dove off of the boat and when they put the receiver back down. Kim and our team placed the receivers where they are because of the distance that they can detect. She put the two receivers maybe 100 to 150 meters apart so it can form a gate so as the spotted eagle rays pass by, they can make sure they detect it. The most interesting thing from the data sets that we found were that we went to two different receivers that were pretty close together. One of them detected a lot more animals than the other one. The south one had over 33,000, and then the north one had 13,000. How was the visibility down there? It was low. It's tough here because the visibility in the passes are always low. This just makes it worse with the red tide. The most fun part of the day was definitely going out on the research boat and just see everything happen and be able to help out. It was pretty cool to be like a marine biologist for a day. Hi, I'm Claire, and I'm 
12 years old. As you can see, I really like to play instruments. I play ukulele, guitar, and viola. I play viola in orchestra at school. I love hula hooping. I've been hula hooping for six years. Bye. The three of us decided that we should answer one of our own questions using the data that we downloaded from the receiver. Hi guys! Today we got to meet Kristen, who is a researcher and specializes in analyzing data. We started brainstorming ideas of what we wanted to answer. Why is there more southern detections than there is northern detections? That's a great question. Um, do you think the female rays pass through more than the males? It's possible because we see pups at certain times a year and the females might be using the area more. Do you think the climate change affects the time the rays stay? Do you think red tide has effect on the rays? So we have a few different questions that we can ask with the data that Kim has collected. We went through and rolled out the ones we needed more factors and we couldn't easily answer with the data that we had. And climate change, that's kind of a big yeah. question. And so that might be bigger than we can look at right now. We decided to investigate if red tide affects where the spotted decoy rays are. That's a good question because we know when the red tide is here and last year the red tide wasn't here. So we have two years that we can compare. So let's go in the lab and look at the data. Studying and getting to answer our own question is like being an actual marine biologist, which is awesome. So now that you have your question of interest, we're going to refine the question a little bit. So yesterday you were out in New Pass, and so we'll look at the data collected on those receivers. So are you interested in understanding the number of detections, or are you interested in understanding the number of unique rays that we see, because an animal can be detected more than once? I think it would be interesting to see uh, the number of detections so we're able to see when the race as a whole left versus when they were here. Once we had a question, we made our hypothesis that when red tide is present, there are less spotted eagle rays in the area. This spans our last two years of data, so I've combined what you collected yesterday into what we've collected before. So how many total detections did we get? We have over 100,000 detections in this file right now. So this is what we call big data. Miss Kristen, what she meant about the term big data is just that there's a lot of data. So how do we make a graph with that much data? I think we should use a program called R. And with that program, we can write some computer code to make our graphs. R is free computer programming software. So a lot of researchers use R so they can create different graphs or scatter plots if they need. So let's meet tomorrow and we can start making our code. All right, hands in. One, two, three, coding! <laughs> Here we are in the wild waters of the Bakersfield Aquarium where we observe colorful, untamed fish. Like her, crikey, she's a beauty. Hey, Jake. Oh, hey, what did you find out? This is all part of an exhibit called All About Algae. To beat algae, we have to understand it. Oh, play mind tricks with it. Got it. Yeah, right. There are many different kinds of algae. Some are so small, they can pass through most filters. That could be how it got into our pond. One kind of algae, called hair algae, grows in strands like hair. <laughs> how do I look? <laughs> like a friendly sea monster. Exactly what I was going for. Some animals, like mussels and clams, eat algae, which helps keep the water clean. <gasps> Jake, we need to get some mussels. And clams! This morning, we were designing our graph at the park, and we chose to go with a bar graph to help represent when the red tide was absent and when it was present, so that you could easily see the number of detections. Are we gonna have a different graph for each month? Uh, I'm thinking maybe we can do two separate graphs. Hi, girls. Can you show me what you've been doing? So initially, we were thinking to have a lot of months or multiple graphs, but Kristen helped us and narrowed it down to having it on one graph. One important thing to note that red tide hasn't been present in all of this year, so it really started in our area in about August. So we decided we wanted to graph August of last year, which was 
clear of red tide and then August of this year, which is when most of the red tide was here. So are we just gonna do one month versus one month? Because it might just be like a coincidence that the rays are gone. Maybe we start with one month to one month and then we can expand it to include more months. The nice thing about computers is that you can constantly revise your hypotheses and your visualization of the data with very few lines of code. Are you all ready to code? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Vern. I had a little bit of coding experience, but just using blocks. I've done HTML, Java, EV3, and Scratch. I thought it was like pretty cool that I was going to be able to hold a whole thing in R. So I've printed a few materials to help you with the coding. So what's our first step? To load data. Excellent. Kristen told us that we should start off simple because with a computer, we can always add on if we want to have more information. And these data have already been narrowed down for you. These are only the eagle rays. So let's move on to step three. So now we have to pull out the monthly data. Yeah. So you're going to create some subsets using your code packet. Subset is when you pull out a part of the data that's important for answering your question. You girls are all set up. I'll be right next door if you need me. The most fun part about learning to code with R, it's definitely fun to do it with friends because then it just makes it more of a fun experience and when you learn together, you can help each other out. Do we want to just do the date because that gives you the year and the month? I think because then it'll only separated. be specified that one date if you do that, so it would probably yeah. be better to do the month. Month equal equal. Yeah. So month <laughs> equal equal. And then in the quotation marks. Uh, of course, yes. Date. So now, are we on the bar plot page? Yes. Okay. All right. Which one do we want to do? So let's start with our 17. Okay. Let's run it. All right, so 16. And let's look at our 18 now. Also 16. So also 16. OK. So we know the numbers. I just want to double check that. When we were plotting the graph, a lot of the times we did have some trouble with that. We got 16 for both of them. So it just didn't make sense with the data. If you like just forgot something as simple as a comma, it would mess up the entire thing and you just would have to redo it. You gotta do a capital V, I think. Oh, I forgot it's like cap center. I'd copy and paste it. it into the other one. Wow, is this right? This is like crazy different way. I'm just gonna double check and make sure it has like the A and everything. Yeah, there are definitely moments where I just kinda wanted to give up and call it a day, but we kept going and it worked. So what type of colors do you think we should do? I so, think we should have red for red tide and then blue for like clear water. Okay. For a blue. I'm thinking dark slate gray two. So color one would be dark slate gray two. Two? Gray two. two. Yeah. Okay. And then a comma. And then comma. comma. And then fire brick four. Ready? Yeah. All right. Let's check. That was probably the most exciting part for me too because it was done and we was like, yay, we actually did this. We coded it all by ourselves, and this is what happened. Hi, I'm Vern and I'm 14 years old. One of my favorite things to do is play electric bass guitar. I play bass guitar in a band called Starstruck. And you gotta play C sharp here. Another thing I love to do is play video games, board games, and card games. I really love taking pictures of the beach. Something that I spend a lot of my time doing is Project TAC, Tourist Awareness Commission. It's my service project, and we try to educate the public about ecotourism. Bye! <laughs> Hi, girls. How's Hi. it going today? Good. Good. I feel like Kristen and Kim will be impressed because we've put a lot of work into what we've done. We titled our graph uh, Red Tide Presence versus the number of spotted eagle ray detections. And our hypothesis was that there would be more detections when red tide wasn't present. You can tell it's a very big difference. There was only 30 detections this August with red tide, and then 522, I think. Yeah, that was yeah, the number. Yeah, when it last year, huge difference. Yeah, you guys did an excellent job, and this is really interesting to see. Do you all have any uh, further questions you'd like to ask with the data after seeing these results? We could do more months to see if there's a trend over time, just so we'll have more information so that it's as accurate as it can be. The plan that we came up with is we decided to do two different graphs, one for the season of last year and one for the season of this year. 
that's where we decided that we was going to do detections from March to September. We changed our code by adding more bars so we could hold more information. So we this and then... I think we just have to highlight all of that and yeah. run it. Ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay! Awesome! There, so now we can compare them. Yeah, so let's go ahead and export this and print it out so we can show Miss Kim and Miss Kristen. So what did you find? So the trends are similar between the two years, but you can kind of see when the red tide is present, it does change it. Wow, you have some really, really interesting results. And this is really important for our research to look at how rays respond to environmental conditions. And I think these results are really timely. And in fact, we are doing a live stream called Raising Awareness. They told us that our graphs were very important to their research and they'll be able to use them. Kim and Kristen invited us to their Raising Awareness live stream to share about our project. Or even our friends, the Terrapins. Live stream is a live presentation that anyone can watch online. Moat does these live streams often, and it's pretty cool that Moat wants us to be a part of it. So you guys ready to get started on our presentation? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. So we're at Clara's house, and we're working on our presentation for the live stream. I think we may want to put something about Red Tide and how it's affecting us and also how it's affecting the rays. In our live stream, we're going to talk about Red Tide and Spotted View Rays, and then we're going to share our results. I was thinking we could do the like original graph first. And after that, we're just going to see if there's any questions from our viewers, and that's that. Hi, my name is Layla, and I love to sit back and read a good book. I also love collecting things. I collect snow globes, books, coins. At my school, I do band, and I play the saxophone. I also do different sports. One of my favorite desserts is a cookie, but do you know what I love more than cookies? Edible cookie dough. Mmm! I love shopping for new clothes. What do you think? But do you know what I really love? Sleep. And guess what time it is? My nap time. We have our presentation done. I think it's time to go over the live stream. Yeah, sounds great. So who wants to talk about Spotted Eagle Race? I can do that. So today we're at Claire's house and we're finishing our presentation and we're practicing for our live stream. So over the course of the week, we have been studying Spotted Eagle Rays and we've been learning all about them. We did some run-throughs, we edited some stuff, added some pictures, took some out, and made some cue cards just to get it ready. I feel more confident being part of a team because I feel if someone messes up, we'll be able to help each other and support each other. I'm excited for the live stream, but I'm also a little anxious and I really don't want to mess up. I feel pretty ready. I feel that me, Claire, and Burn, we can rock this presentation and live stream out. Today we're at Boat Sea Trek Studio and we're going to present our live stream. Hello and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ross and I'm coming to you live from Moat Marine Labs in Sarasota, Florida. Today in the live stream we had classes from New Mexico, Florida, Washington, South Carolina, and Minnesota. So this week, we got the opportunity to go out on a research boat, and since the receivers are underwater, we had two divers come with us to collect the receivers. So we made our first graph based on our original question, which was, is there more detections this year when red tide was present, or is there more detections last year when red tide wasn't present? And on our second graph, we thought to get more information, we could do the whole spotty worry season. So that tells us that the rays are leaving during red tide. We don't know whether it's because their food supply or just the reason why they left or where they went. So that could be a cool follow-up question. We're going to have our audience ask us some questions. Uh, what would you girls like to do next to continue learning about marine biology and coding? I would definitely like to next year do some more research with these spotted eagle rays because that was awesome. After hearing about our project, I hope the audience members really understand that what they do really affects the ocean. Today I hope that all the people watching the live stream took away that no matter how young you are or even if it's just you, that you can make a difference. So we are signing off from Moat Marine Lab. Hope you have a great one and remember, continue to dive deeper. Uh, Kim and Kristen said the live stream went well. 
They thought we did a good job presenting what we've learned throughout this week. Thank you so much for everything that you have taught us and being our mentors for this week. Well, you girls are very welcome. Really, it was our pleasure to have you here this week. You know, you guys really did help with starting the initial uh, a question we, we do have and about how red tide affects the movement of these rays. Having Kim as a mentor was inspiring, not only because she's a female scientist, but she also has other interests. Let it stay on your hand and then you just keep it going. Being a scientist, you don't only have to be focused on what you study, but you can also have other interests. I like my jump rope. <laughs> Why? Having Kristen as a mentor was also really inspiring. We got to see someone who was really passionate and really focused on their work, but someone who's also really enjoys their work. Wow, that's really that's cool. That's awesome. It feels pretty good to share your work because people can see all the hard work that you put in. It was really cool to share our work with students across the country, so it's cool to be able to reach out to people all over. I'm sad that this incredible experience is over, but I'm happy that we were able to educate kids and their teachers about Red Tide and what we've been learning this entire week. I think we're done. Yeah. yeah. Looks pretty good. Yeah, it really looks like a spotted eagle ray. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Clams are ready to go. I've got the muscles and the muscles. Jake! Oh, hey. We can finally see the fish in our pond. Thanks, clams. And mussels. Ugh, which way to the beach? <laughs> Crikey. There for you, teams. No, 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 no. Gang, do you all want to make a game? We should have a digital component. Cool. Yeah, we got it. Thank you for coming to play our prototype. There are a lot of other game designers here. They're all presenting their games. We are up next. <laughs> I was excited because I've never been to NASA. We decided to make a camera trap. You could find out what animals are in certain areas. I'm really excited to see what we got on camera. Major funding for Sci Girls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding is provided by PPG Foundation aims to bring color and brightness to communities around the world. Cargill, helping the world thrive. And Craig Newmark Philanthropies. There's more fun on the Sci Girls website. You can watch videos, play games, and have a high-tech ocean adventure. See you at pbskids.org.